Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and I make videos about quilting and my creative life. Anywhere that you can find me on the internet is listed down in the description bar below. So do check out my other platforms if you want to stay up to date with what I'm making. Now in today's video we're going to be looking at this wonderful sampler book um, that's Alice's Wonderland Sampler Quilt and there's 100 blocks in this book. And this book was very kindly gifted to me by Alice Caroline and the publishers, so thank you very much for that. Um, you might have saw over on my Instagram that I'm running a giveaway for this book, but I think by the time that I put this video out, the giveaway will have been closed. So congratulations to the winner, and I'm really sorry if you've missed out on the giveaway. You can purchase this book directly from Alice Caroline, and it ships immediately. So that's the best way to um, purchase the book. I know a few people have said that they've purchased on Amazon, and it's not shipping out till much later and of course we want to support the wonderful Alice Caroline with giving her our purchase rather than Amazon if we can. I already made a couple of blocks from this quilt and I'll show you those but since doing those two blocks I am now on hand rest. <laughs> um, I've been experiencing some hand strain and things so I'm just trying to keep my hand sewing to a minimum just to let my hands recover just it's not like it's really painful to the point where I need to strap up my hands, but I can just feel that I'm not able to sew for as long as I usually did. And just the actual act of sewing or doing things with my hand is hurting my hands, mainly on the top here. Um, so I'm just giving it a little rest. So obviously I've still got to do some quilting. <laughs> I've still got to fuel the addiction somehow. So um, I've currently got my houses on the go. So I thought I would give it a go and do some machine piecing of these blocks. So there's lots of different blocks in this book. There's some traditional blocks. You can obviously do adapt them maybe for English paper piecing or hand piecing, which is what I was doing. But the instructions in the book are for traditional machine piecing. Um, and then there's some raw edge applique and uh, some English paper piecing in here. So there's already a bit of variety, so I don't mind if I have to chop and change a little bit. But here, that gives you an idea of the quilt and all of the colours. So I'm going to dive into my Liberty stash and let's see what we can get making and how many blocks. Now, when I did my previous... Now, when I did these two previous blocks, I don't know why, but they've come out different sizes. So I don't know if I'll have to remake. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have to remake one of them. So I'll see how the machine piecing goes and how consistent the sizes are on those. But obviously with machine piecing, it's really easy to trim down the blocks. But with hand piecing, you can't cut your stitches. Um, it will just all come apart. So I'll have to see how I get along. It's not a huge difference but it may cause some issues, but nothing we can't work out right. Now, the fabric that I used for these is, um, the white fabric is a mode of grunge in the color vanilla. I've ordered some more of this because the book calls for six meters or six and a half yards for the whole entire quilt by the time you've done the borders and the sashing. So, um, I've ordered some more, but it hasn't arrived yet. I did only order one meter because, um, budget <laughs> I'm sure I'll be able to order it again from the same place so I, I don't mind too much and with the mode of grunge there's a little bit of variation so even if I have to order it from somewhere else and I don't know if dye lots are a thing with fabric but I don't mind too much so I've got I think I ordered 25 centimeters before so I've probably got enough to get me going today so first things first let's tidy away the previous project because as a lot of you know I craft on my dining table so this has got to get tidied up before we can start the new production line <laughs> So this here is my Liberty stash here. So that's the murder grunge that I was telling you about. It's got some type of variations to it, like all the grunge ones. So I'll have a good amount here to get going with today until the rest arrives tomorrow, hopefully. 
and in this box I keep all of my larger pieces. I've never bought Liberty off the meter, the Tarna Lawn anyway, um, so I just keep all of the, you know, the scraps that I purchase. So these are the larger ones. And then in here, oh, I've got a bunch of low volumes that is in here for another project. But in here is all of the Liberty ribbons. I've just bought them out just on the off chance that I'll be able to get some use out of them. Like perhaps that one might be able to be used, but some of them are quite thin. So I'll have to have a look at what's required for the first block. So the two blocks I'm going to try today is the nine patch and the checkerboard. Now I've done nine patches before but I've never done it in the type of method that you cut them which I know is the uh, the proper method to doing them. I've just put some fabric here just to conceal the instructions. So yeah these are the two that I'm going to make and I haven't bought the kit for the fabric but I'm just going to pull from my stash and I am using similar tones. So as in the previous two blocks, I still used a yellow and a blue, and then I tried to use a pink and a ready one, but it's come out a little bit more purple, this one. But I'm just still going to try and match the colours unless I don't like it. Let me just show you this detail on the book. Look at all those little triangles, all the Liberty fabrics that are there. Beautiful. <laughs> Now in this clip I decided that it would be important for me to measure my needle position to make sure I was at a quarter of an inch. I do usually do this but I hand crank the machine needle down but in this clip I decided to drop it automatically and the needle went straight into the acrylic ruler. <laughs> I tell you what, the concentration required. <laughs> It's just next level. Uh, I already thought that I'd cut one of the pieces wrong, but I hadn't. I just hadn't cut enough. Um, and that's what I really like about this book. And I was drawn to it because it is designed to improve your quilting skills. It says on the front to improve your quilting skills. So what I like about it is it starts with easy blocks. Um, I'm already on block three and I'm like, I've never done this block before. I've never done any of the blocks before. Um, but I can see how it's really expanding on what you learn in the previous blocks. So I really, really like that. Um, I'm just not, I've done a lot of quilting, but never really a lot of machine quilting until I started having these hand paints. I hadn't really explored um, machine quilting and then I got hooked on foundation paper piecing and I just couldn't stop. Um, but traditional piecing has always like scared me a little bit because of how accurate you need to be. <laughs> and if you've watched my channel, that's not me. <laughs> so let's try and be as accurate as I can and I'm going to try and concentrate. <laughs> So I've done my first ever, uh, what do you call it, a nine patch, but I've just come to measure it and I am more than a quarter inch short on all sides. It's meant to be six and a half inches. So I think the issue here is my middle, but that's not a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to have to unpick them so I can see if I can like diagnose the problem because as I said I haven't got tons of the fabric but on my other blocks this one was a quarter inch smaller so do I just make them all six and a quarter inch? <laughs> Let me have a look. These are all like pretty much the same size. Do I make them six and a quarter inch the blocks? It definitely says six and a half inches and I've just remeasured all my pieces and my pieces are all correct but I think I've I think I've gone awry. Wow 
yeah I think there is the issue and added to a little bit here so I'm just going to um, seam rip it and see if I can do it again a little bit more accurately and I'll let you know but I really like those colours do you? So take two, the seam ripper is now firmly away <laughs> and the nine patch is redone. I think it was the centre one that was slightly out and I'm really happy with how accurate it is. I'll give you a close up look. Um, yeah, my seams match really nicely. Uh, yeah, it was the centre ones that are out. It's still like a millimetre short of six and a half inches, but that'll be fine by the time I add the sashing on. So it should measure six and a half, which is the whole width of my ruler. And it does that way. Let's have a look this way. It does. Just about. There's a few that are in, and but I'm not going to trim the wider bits, I don't think. I'll just... Maybe that one needs trimming just there. I'll go with that. <laughs> I'll just take that. <laughs> right then, let's have a look what block is next because I don't even know. Okay, log cabin. I've done a log cabin before, but I've never done one following the colours. So I was hoping for an easier one, but I'm sure I can follow the instructions and it'll be fine. <laughs> and then I'll probably try and do that one. Oh, I don't need any of the cream for this one. So that will save me quite a bit. I'll just make sure I follow the instructions and go from there. Well, here is the log cabin. I really wanted to tell you as I was sewing it, I was like, oh, I'll be able to tell them that I didn't use the seam whipper on this one. I think that jinxed it because um, I sewn one of the fabrics the wrong side up. So it was the back that ended up showing. So I had to seam rip that off. I also had an issue with the size on this one. I, d I honestly don't know what I'm doing. Um, so it was when I was on this blue edge. Um, so it should have measured. I only had three quarters of an inch to add at that point. So it should have measured five and three quarter inch. And it only measured five and a half. And then this next piece that I'd already cut to put on was an inch. So that would have only made it six and a quarter inches then. So then I just put this one on, which was more than wide enough, and then I've trimmed it all down to the right size. But I've checked my, seam, my seams, and they are a quarter of an inch. Let me just check again. I'll do a random spot check. Yeah, they're all bang on. A quarter of an inch. Oh, there's the dog. <laughs> I didn't realise she was there. Yeah, they're all bang on a quarter of an inch, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um... 
maybe I should have just done what I said in the beginning and had them all at six and a quarter but it doesn't matter I can always trim them down and fudge them up a bit if I need to <laughs> that's what I usually do with my quilts especially when they're scrappy quilts I find that you can manipulate them a little bit and trim them down a little bit easier than when they're a set design but I feel like I've kind of I've had to concentrate a lot to do these three blocks <laughs> so I've done the lug cabin the checkerboard which is one inch squares and then the nine patch obviously that one went wrong <laughs> so I don't feel like I've done a lot today but these are three blocks that I've never done before and then I've got this one and then that one so so far I've got five blocks which is quite good and I was looking in the book so the next block is is a simple cross it says and i've had a quick look through the instructions and it does look quite an easy construction um so hopefully i'll be able to get that to the right size <laughs> i think that's just the main thing that that's worrying me because what if it's too small well i guess then i'll just have to make them all six and a quarter when i which is no problem so yeah so then after that so the next two I like variations on each other so we've got the simple cross and then the one after that is a simple cross variation <laughs> so what's after that oh wow I'm scared to do that look at that corner tiles that one's called And then the section after, so there's another four more blocks, no, a lot more. I think there's 10 blocks, 11 blocks of like straight lines and then it goes on to uh, half square triangles. I'm sure I'll develop my confidence as I go along. But sometimes I always think you need to end something on a high point and I just haven't got it in me yet. <laughs> to continue until I get a block right um, but I don't think it's anything to do with the book it, it's just me I'm a total beginner in this type of traditional piecing so I thought I would leave in the errors that I've made because quite a lot of people on my other videos says that it gives them confidence when they know <laughs> that other people make mistakes <laughs> which I do I might sit down again this evening and do another couple blocks so that I've got a little bit of confidence because I don't want to put this away until the fabric arrives on sort of like a negative point thinking oh, I'll keep doing them wrong um, so yes I think I might sit down this evening after I've had my dinner and just try and sew at least one more block and we'll see how that goes <laughs> So it is now the next day and yesterday after I had had my little sewing tiz, I think it was one of those days after I broke that needle, I should have just known it was going to be one of those days and put the sewing machine away. But I gave it a few hours and then I came back to it and I made two more blocks and I was so pleased with them. Let me show you. So there's the first one and then there's the second one so you can see that they are both a slight variation on each other this was the first one that I did and once I had the confidence from there I just thought well I'm going to do that one now and then the next one that I'm going to sit down and do now I'm quite excited for it and if you remember yesterday I said I was scared of it <laughs> So that's the corner tiles one and again it's a very slight variation on what I've done on the last two um, but yeah I do feel like my confidence has grown just coming back to it having a few hours away coming back to it and doing those that being said those still measure six and a quarter <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to ease it in is that what they call it they're not quite six and a quarter they're a little bit over in some places 
seems like there in the middle it is less than six and it's six and a quarter there in the middle but then i can stretch it out and ease it out in some directions it is six and a half in others it's six and a quarter so i don't know what's going on with that but i'm not going to worry myself at least they're all coming out at consistently the same size <laughs> undersized so yeah i last night i think i finished them about half eight and i sat down and thought i've really enjoyed that it has really boosted my confidence and it does exactly what it says it was doing expanding on my sewing skills it was just one of those days I think I should have just left it. <laughs> it was just one mistake after another. So yeah, I'm going to do those and I'll come back with a little bit of footage, close up footage of all the blocks that I make so that you can see them in more detail. Um, but I think I said my goodbyes in yesterday's video, so I'll insert that here. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate all of your comments and subscribing to the channel that really helps push me out to other people so thank you so much in advance for that and you take care bye